We get asked a lot on the channel about loop supplies and it takes us here to the origin of the installation where we've already installed an EV charging point. And if you haven't seen those videos, I recommend you check them out. But we're going to take that journey now, aren't we, Gordon? Yeah, we are, because a lot of people find out they have a loop supply when it's a little bit too late. They've ordered the car, it's about to be delivered and they're expecting that EV charge point to be installed and a loop supply can halt that process. So what we're going to do in this video is look at what exactly a loop supply is what you can do about it and possibly some of the time scales and cost implications so let's start by having a look at what you'd expect to see in a new installation now we wouldn't expect this modern installation to have a loop supply however let's have a look at some of the kit that we've got here when you're looking or investigating it you need to find your meter so once you've found your meter you'll find your incoming fuse rated at 60 80 or 100 amps and this area here is really important when looking for the cable that feeds it in this installation the cable comes into the bottom and it's one single cable we don't believe this is a loop supply no we don't because it's a modern installation so loop supplies mainly affect older installations particularly a lot of terror proper is as well and what you're looking for is two cables but two cables doesn't necessarily mean you're not on a loop supply so let's have a look at that in further detail so here's a graphical representation of what we've just seen in real life the only difference here is I've added in the consume unit Gary so where would that normally be in an older house yeah it could be situated under a stairs or high level above a door in that sort of area but it's always going to be very close to that metering equipment when you're hunting down to look at the fuse and obviously that incoming cable yeah so there we've got that service cable coming in which is the property of the DNO, the electricity board, the supply company, whatever you want to call them. And above that is the cutout fuse. So don't touch this if you're a homeowner and even electricians really shouldn't be touching that. This is the property of the, uh, the DNO who owns the cable. Um, above that, the electricity meter and then the tails out to the consumer unit. So yeah, most houses, 95%, whatever houses, this is what you'd expect to see. And that's what we've just seen, uh, the installation that we've just shown you in the first part of the video footage. Yeah, so then let's have a look at a loop supply. So very subtle difference here, and you've got to be <laughs> a trained eye to see it. You will see there's two cables coming into the bottom of that DNO service cutout. So one coming in and one going out. But then when we look at the reality of what's happening uh, under, the, uh, under the road, or under the path is property one is connected by that cable leaving the service cut out to property number two next door. And it doesn't mean that you'll only have two properties looped together, it could be several. And it's the first cable coming in there to property number one from the DNO cable supply is the one that will be taking the full current for property one, two, three, and four. And that's where the issue arises. Yeah, so it didn't used to be an issue. So, you know, the, the whole electricity network relies on the fact that not everybody uses the same amount of power at the same time. So the chances are you're not going to be having a shower at the same time as your neighbor is. You're not going to be probably cooking your tea on an induction hob at the same time as having a shower. And even if you were having a shower or cooking something, it's not on for an incredibly long amount of time However, what happens when you add an EV charger, Gary? Yeah, so we're saying that maybe property one, property two, property three, all get EV chargers and they're on for seven, 10 hours at virtually the same time. Obviously, then we're gonna have that issue. There is no load sharing then. They're on and they're on for a considerable amount of time. And there's gonna be some overlap, meaning that cable from the DNO supply is gonna be fully loaded for those properties. Yeah, so to correct it, quite simple. Property number two needs to be connected to that main DNO supply cable, possibly out in the street. Yeah, it needs rerouting. That sounds uh, sounds pretty simple. But let's have a look at what a loop supply looks like in uh, in real life, so you can have a, a further investigation to see if you have one. So here's the classic one that we showed there. You can see those two cables, Gary. Yeah, so let's look at what we've got. We've got the left-hand side, we've got the consumer unit, we can see the tails, we can see a very small meter, and under that, we've got that cutout fuse, which we would be looking to see what size fuse it is. Is it 60, is it 80, is it 100? And then when we lower our eyes down a little bit further, we can see the loop supply, cable coming in, cable going out, and then we've got to think about what's gonna happen next. Yeah, so that's a, that's a common version. Uh, possibly if you're an overhead supply, it might look slightly different. So again, in this photograph, you can see at the top of the picture there under that buckle clip, there are two cables, but that's right up against the, the ceiling. And the clues again, there's the electric meter, there's the cutout, and obviously we're looking now for that cable, not in the bottom, it's coming in the top this time. Yeah, so just have a little closer look at that. 
again so there you can see those uh, that cable coming in and going out yeah and there's two there and again i would suggest that probably needs looking at by by somebody but that's an in and an out it's a loop supply yeah so here's another uh, variant uh, so not very common this but this is on the outside of a property so we can see our supply cable is the same size as the cables feeding property number one and number two so they are sharing that cable yeah, and this is common probably in those more rural properties and some terrace style housing where the cable systems are dressed on the front of the property, but it doesn't mean they are loop supplies if you're in that position. No, so here's another, uh, another example. So this looks awful. I wouldn't like this on the outside of my house, but this isn't a loop supply. No, but it's got lots of traits of the previous picture suggesting you might think it is. And that's where the investigation into whether you've got a loop supply has to take place. So you don't trip up and think, oh, I've got a cable on the outside of my building. It must be looped. Yeah. So the next thing, obviously, if you've discovered, you suspect you have a loop supply, how do you get it sorted out? Now, here's the important thing. If you're going to be fitting an EV, um, you need to submit a form, which is this energy network association form but this is not built for humans to fill in this needs the input of a qualified electrician okay so it might be quite daunting form to fill in but it's going to be one that we pass across to our electrical contractor yeah so this is the first bit so i'll start about maximum demand so that's how much power a peak demand is a property likely to take what is the existing uh, fuse rating of the property and then it goes on to later in the document you will see is the supply a looped one? So that's off. Yes, yes, no, don't know. Um, and then, yeah, so again, this is this is the electrician. Don't try and fill this in yourself and send it off to the uh, the DNO. It's um, yeah, this is where this needs to be done by an electrician. So next bit, obviously, um, you know, how do we correct it? Well, you know, you are going to have a have to have a discussion with your neighbours. Now, it may be you who has the uh, who wants to install the uh, EV charger. Uh, and you want to be unlooped from their supply, but likewise they may be having a, an EV charge and need to, you to be unlooped from them. So it's the person who has the loop who probably has the most uh, work to be done on their property. Yeah, and again, it might be that the property next to you needs all the work doing to it. However, in the future, they'll benefit from being unlooped anyhow because they won't have the issue when they decide to have an EV car. Yeah, it's not going to go away as more people get uh, get electric vehicles. So yeah, so obviously it is a problem if they're incredibly proud of the garden and it's, uh, yeah, it's all, it's all uh, nicely done. Uh, nobody really wants to have the garden turned into, into this as obviously that cable is rerouted and a new one installed. Yeah, and, and that's the sort of thing that's going to have to happen. If it isn't on the outside of your property, it's going to be buried somewhere in front of your property. They're going to need to excavate and then unloop your supply in order that you have your own cable feeding from the DNO cable into your installation. Yeah, so I guess the next thing to look at, Gary, is cost and time. So in the event of discovering you have a loop supply, to me that looks like it's going to be an expensive unlooping process. Yeah, there's a yeah, considerable amount of work there, um, but we've helped a few eFix viewers through this process, uh, speaking to some of the, uh, the DNOs and the various people involved. Um, so far, it looks like the cost has been absorbed by us all, Gary. We're treating everybody. So uh, absorbing means it could be free to be unlooped. Yeah, so it's unlooped if it's an EV being installed, an EV charge point. So um, yes, there will be the unlooping processes for free if at the same time you want your supply upgraded to higher power That may not be the case, but as ever um, You know share your experience if you've been unlooped or you're going through the process of being unlooped and uh, That may take some time. Uh, yeah, share your comments below. We'd, be, we'd love to hear your experience um, uh, on, on the subject of timescale Gary um, it's not quick. Right, so if I go to the forecourt, I choose my car, I choose the colour, I choose to have additional mats inserted into the car, you're saying that the process of actually having a dedicated EV charging point at home when I have a loop supply may take weeks or months? Yeah, that's what we're hearing there. It can be a number of months to do it and people are finding out that they've got a loop supply late in the process. The car's about to be delivered and they want to go through that process. And um, we've heard various, I think, depending on who's installing your EV charge point, how proactive they are in helping you with the process. Right. Um, so my suggestion would be it's probably best to start with uh, a, probably a more locally based uh, EV installer who, you know, if you've got an electrician who's worked in your installation before, 
they're probably more willing to support you through that process than some of the ones who do about volume and speed of getting EV chargers in installed. Yeah, and we said that electrician will help you through the paperwork part of the process and obviously can manage that time as well. We are really interested in your comments on this one. If you're an electrician and you've had to go through the process to have somebody unlooped and you've got some gems that you want to share with the community, can you please leave those in the comments below? If you've had your supply unlooped as a customer and you want to talk about that process, whether it be a smooth one or one that was quite difficult and the amount of time it took to do it, and whether it was maybe a contributing factor putting you off or neighbors off about having an EV charging point put in as well, that would be great as well. And we will try and get back to as many of these comments yeah. as we can. Cam. And don't forget, if you haven't seen the other videos in this series yeah. where we're looking at the process of installing an EV charge point, once you've got a supply that is unlooped, some of the other things you can do with that EV charger, some of the other value adding features, solar power, and some of the other challenges you may face in that EV journey, then check out the rest of the videos in this series.